a benchmark and a goal. It doesn't just make you look good, it'll make your campaigns better, you'll brief better, you'll measure better, you'll learn more. You'll aim for realistic differentiation. You'll get rid of these giant brand presentations and keyholes and purpose statements and nonsense, and you'll realize my brand is a little, little thing. That's not a, a, an acceptance of defeat, it's realism. And you'll aim for relative, realistic differentiation. You'll aim for a multi-channel mix within the limit of your budget. Not everyone can afford TV. Not everyone can commit to doing everything. But the more channels you can add into that campaign, the more effective it is likely to be. You will go long and short. 60, 40, or whatever the appropriate ratio is should be an aspirational goal. Again, my warning to you in practice, I believe the work of Keeler and Lance, I, I believe it completely. It's not practical sometimes to go, right, 60% long, you'll get eight months, and then the money will be taken from you. Commit to as much long and protect it for three years as you can, and start to turn the wheel. I can't prove this, but I'm sure of it. Mass and targeted, two-speed brand plans. Go after everyone in the category with your overall long-term emotional brand building, and then go after target segments with more specific product offers. Sufficient ESOV, maybe to maintain share, but if you're serious about growth, the thing about ESOV, it's pretty inescapable. Yeah? If you don't commit to it, you're probably not gonna get the growth attached to it. It's very rare to see something hold out so strongly across so many categories. Look at your ESOV, is it really gonna power your effectiveness? Codes, applied ridiculously. A logo plus three or four codes, and then codify the shit out of everything. To the point where people come to you and say, you've blown it, it's over the top, do it some more. Trust me, you cannot over-codify all of your touch points. Try it, you'll only make money. <laughs> Creativity. We are lucky to have the only two people in the world, literally in the world, that have made this point with this amount of empirical data, and you should be convinced. Creativity drives so much of effectiveness, and we've all forgotten it in the last decade. We now need to remember it for the decade that comes. And finally, brand size. It's unfortunate for those of you that are middle or lower than average size, good news for the bigger boys and girls in the room, but building a brand, one of the greatest reasons why you would do it is it gives you an unfair advantage into future effectiveness. Two last points. This is not, again, a repeat, a collection. This is a ranking from 10 down to one. And remember that, so I'd start with the stuff at the bottom and then move to the stuff at the top. If you follow Dyson's research, what it tells you is brand size is 18 times more important. That's a big multiplier, yeah? So read it very much from the bottom to the top. Second, these are not discrete. There's lots of data showing how they play together. So if you take ESOV and brand size, what you see is if you're a challenger brand, smaller than average, and you commit to 10% ESOV, you're likely to get next year a plus 0.4% increase in market share. Because although your ESOV is good, number four, your brand size sucks. If you do number four and you have number one, you get 1.4 points of market share. So these aren't discrete items, they play together in driving effectiveness. For example, the reason I think KFC are doing so well with multi-channel is they codify the shit out of multi-channel and the two are working together. And finally, if you look at ESOV and creativity, there's a lot of research showing you that the best results come from ESOV multiplied by creatively awarded work. The two maximize each other. So, the reason we're here is to think just for a moment about TV. Why is it the firm Ubiquity, who I regard as the only straight shooter in the industry? Everyone's got a chart showing you that their media is better than everyone else's media. You've all seen those charts, right? We have more ROI than everyone else. Everyone's got that chart. No one hasn't got that chart. The only people I believe are Ubiquity because I believe they are properly straight and trustworthy. Ubiquity this year, looking across five continents and more than 2,000 campaigns, saw that about 46% of spend across all these different categories went on TV, way higher than Canada, as we've already seen. But when they ran their econometrics in a very elaborate and extremely impressive way, they said the optimal result should be closer to 62%. That's not think TV's data, I wouldn't believe it for 
it was. It's ubiquitous data. They're straight. This actually hurts ubiquity because they're trying to get them on whatever Facebook and Google. Good fucking luck with that data. <laughs> Why is TV still such an important and powerful medium? Because so many of the effectiveness drivers are exemplified by TV. It's the one that allows you to build the best differentiated image. It's the one that plays best as a catalyst in multi-channel. It's the one that speaks the most long and short, top and bottom of funnel. It's a fantastic mass media. It's incredible as a portal for creativity, and it feeds the brands that are biggest more than any other. The reason why we should feed TV isn't because we're at this fine event, it's because it's more effective than anything else. Thank you.